Hello and welcome to Angry Andy Reviews and this is my review for The Last of Us Episode 3. Now, this episode, um, I'm going to get right to it. This episode for me, I think, is is possibly one, one of the best episodes of TV I've seen in a very long time, if not ever, um, to be fair. I wouldn't necessarily say it's, it is the best episode, um, but it, it is certainly up there, like I said. This show, God damn it, is really, um, really sort of piecing together some excellent quality character written drama and horror, and you know I, I don't know where I don't know why I'm surprised really because the game itself was very well written, very well performed, and it's only you know <laughs> it's obvious really that they were going to you know try and do things you know to that degree if not more powerful. Um, so this episode starts and we don't have we don't have a pre credits flashback, surprisingly enough. I was looking forward to it. However, uh, we do just dry, dive straight in to Joel and Ellie. They're uh, traversing the countryside. They're in the woods to begin with. And there's a real excellent sort of childlike quality with Ellie where she, she says, oh, this is the first time I've been in the woods, you know, and she's in awe of everything that's going on around her. Um, Joel is clearly still distraught at the loss of Tess. Um, and he's kind of cold towards Ellie. Um, they move on, and there is you know an encounter at the gas station. Um, Joel's looking for some bits and pieces. Mild spoilers in in this review. I'm not going to go too in depth with the spoilers because I think you need to review this uh, for yourself in your own sort of in your own way. Um, such as you know the quality of this episode. I think I think it deserves to be seen rather than spoiled by anyone. Um, but yeah, they're in the gas station. Ellie finds a trapped security guard, I think, um, who has been turned, and it's horrific. She sort of explores him with a little with her little knife and cuts him a bit, and you see the tendril, and it's <laughs> it's horrible. Um, these fungus creatures, they're freaking me the hell out, and they did in the game, to be fair. And I think that's what's really great about about this series so far. There is clear tension. And horror around every corner you never know you're never sure where it's going to come from um you know these creatures you know can live in the daylight they can live in the darkness you know we're not entirely sure which which where they thrive really <laughs> you know they can be anywhere it's terrifying um but yeah so joel's looking for some supplies ellie finds you know this this this, this creature um and she kills it um Moving on from there, they come across a crash plane, and Ellie again expresses this childlike wonder. Of, wow, you know, I can't believe you—you you guys used to be able to, you know, fly in the sky. And Joel's like, "Well, it wasn't that great, and it wasn't really great for these people either." And you can see the crash plane um, across the plains, across the hills. Um, they continue on, and you know, Joel says, "We're going to cut across here. We're not going to go that way." And Ellie's like, "Nah, nah, we'll go, we'll go, we'll go." Um, and Joel, you know, says, "What, what, what's up ahead?" isn't you know it's not something you should really should be seeing um and they come across a mass grave and it's a little bit horrific joel sort of explains you know while they're heading that way you know what happened um you know what the reasons were you know for why this happened essentially the government you know would evacuate everyone um from these small towns and say oh you go into a you go into a you know a qz quarantine zone um, but then if there wasn't space, they would basically stop where they are and kill you all. Um, stop to spread the virus, which, uh, stop to spread the fungus, which is, again, horrific. Um, but we're getting exposition in the right way that sort of, ex you know, enhances, you know, and tells us stuff that we, you know, we're not sure of, but we, we still, you know, we need to know, you know, the, how society fell, essentially. And again, Ellie asks, you know, how how did this how did this all happen? How did it all start? Was it a monkey? A little bit of a joke there too, you know. Um, what, what's that film? Oh Christ, one with Dustin Hoffman. Is it Outbreak or something? Yeah, I think it's Outbreak. Um, yeah, a little bit of a joke to that, you know, because the whole bloody pandemic starts with one monkey bite. Um, and here Joel sort of says, well, the theory is that this fungus was passed by grain sugar you know, basic elements in certain foods. And if you ate it, you know, during the point of the initial outbreak, then you were infected. And if you think back to sort of like the very first episode, they missed getting a cake. 
they miss doing all this and doing all that. So we're, we're getting little flecks of interesting sort of, you know, elements that have been shown to us that are being further explained and enhanced, you know, stuff that we, we don't really get in the game. Like I said in the last review, you just get you just get bits and pieces of, you know, information from newspaper cuttings and from journals and things like that here. Again, we're getting exposition in the form of speculation, but it fits and it works because it drives attention, it drives the narrative, it's driving these this character development, this character, you know, the, these dialogue moments, um, especially between Joel and Ellie where the relationship is still building, um, which is unfortunately at the moment um, struggling, you know, due to the sheer fact that Joel sees uh, Ellie as being responsible for the loss of Tess. Um when they're at this mass grave, we, we cut, we flash back to, you know, a really sad sort of jump, really. So the camera at this mass grave is focused on a very small bit of clothing and a dress. And we cut back and there's a woman holding a baby, a baby and they're both wearing the same things. Um, and this is where we come to Bill. And Bill's hiding away in a cellar while the army's trying to get all these people out. And he's all alone. He's left all alone. He builds this town. Um you know, once they've all gone over the course of a couple of years, it's very, very quick. This episode is quite very quick in sort of jumping between different time periods. Um, eventually, um, we see uh, Frank get stuck in a hole and Bill sort of lets him out and rescues him. He's a bit tentative initially. Um, they have dinner together. Um, Frank's basically like, I'm, I'm hungry a bit. I've escaped from Baltimore QZ, which has gone under. Again, little bits of information that we, we know from the game, but we get a little flex of, um, you know, in information that's really sort of driving everything. Um, and, you know, from there, a relationship builds. They have dinner together and it continues to grow. And I'm not going to really spoil too much more in, re in regards to that, you know, in regards to what they do. Like I said, they do they do build up a nice relationship together. Um, and it becomes, this episode becomes a romantic drama, um, which I didn't expect I'm be quite honest, didn't expect. Obviously, Bill in the game is a very different character. We don't get any sense of, you know, what relationship he has with Frank. The only thing that we do know is that he's he's furious with Frank, uh, because in the game, Frank uh, apparently gets infected and then hangs himself. Um, so there is a bit of bitterness there from Bill in the game, you know, and he becomes this bitter, lonely old man who doesn't want any contact with anybody. But in this, it changes. The dynamics changed. And this story in this episode becomes about, you know, how how people go about just doing the the normal everyday life together as a couple in the apocalypse. And it's it's very sweet, it's very emotionally charged. There are there are moments where they you know they, they're cooking dinner together, they have an argument about <laughs> about the state of the town. And Frank's like, well, I want to, I want to fix this town. I want to make it look nice. So when I come out, it's, it looks nice. And Bill's like, well, we live in this house. What does it matter? As long as the house inside's nice. And Frank's like, no, 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 no. I want to be able to walk around and enjoy where I live. Very mundane stuff in terms of surviving the apocalypse. But you, it's, it's real character drama. It's real character emotion. It hits so fucking well. That you are, you become emotionally invested in these characters, um, these characters that we 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 only meet for this episode, really. Um, again, I'm not going to spoil what comes, what happens, but everything builds. We see an entire twenty years of these people, of these two. Well, I think it's about it's about ten that they they live together. I think about ten years that these two are together. And we get a sense of their, their relationship where, you know, elements, you know, get difficult between the two. You know, they have to deal with emergencies. Um, again, there's, there's a raiding party that comes. Um, they have to deal with meeting new people. And this is how the connection between uh, Joel and Bill comes around. Because obviously Frank <laughs> has been sending messages to some woman over the radio. And it turns out it's Tess and Joel and they come for dinner. And there's a wonderful standoffish moment between Bill and Joel, where they're not as sure of each other and they have an interesting, you know, a wonderful bit of dialogue between between them, where they're like, well, I wouldn't trust you either. I wouldn't trust if somebody else was brought into my castle, you know, when this is all happening. But it grows from there. And it grows to a point where, in hindsight, I think this was 
a better decision than what we get in the game because we are we are hit with emotional beat after emotional beat continuously throughout this episode and it's a longer episode than the previous episode much longer and we are constantly hit with emotional elements about people just trying to get by in this world you know making the most of it enjoying life together whilst dealing with you know bloody creatures of fungus related origin and <clears throat> truth be told i didn't think you know the story of bill knowing, knowing what i knew about bill i didn't think the story of bill would impact me in any way at all i knew what to expect but this the change in this in this episode is uh, changing sort of pace the ch- change in horror the horror becomes just life you know how, how do they deal with you know what what happens to Frank, for example, and again, I'm not going to say too much. Well, well, well how, do they, how do they deal with that? And they eventually come to a decision between the two of them about what they're going to do. And it becomes a very touching moment. It becomes, you know, deeply upsetting, really, um, that these two have nothing else to live for but each other in amongst all this. When they both said, that, you know, initially that they, they, they don't need anybody else. They don't need anybody in their lives well you know they needed each other in the end so this has been i think you know such a a beautifully written episode and i mean it is beautifully written it looks fantastic throughout the entire episode as as i've said with the previous episode cinematography is incredible you know the music is is wonderful the score is wonderful in this episode it is acting and writing it's spectacular it's probably one of the most superb individual performances I've seen from, um, you know, from from both of these actors in this episode. And it sells absolutely every single, you know, every moment. They, they sell every single moment. They sell every single beat. They sell every, every single emotional element. Um, <clears throat> to be fair... I don't really know what else to say, really. I think it is an episode that you have to watch on its own merits. Um, The changes they've made, you know, from the game, absolutely 100% work, absolutely 100% needed to happen, I think, because we are given, you know, a beautiful backstory to, you know, two characters that, you know, briefly appear in the game and then are left ambiguous as to as to you know their outcome but here they're given a beautiful backstory they're given a a beautiful ending and considering you know this is episode three in and we're thinking oh well why are we deviating why are we going to these characters spending a lot of time with these characters i think it's absolutely necessary because it cements the growth in the character of joel so joel and ellie come to the the town where bill and frank were um where they where they built up and everything and you know it goes from there um and again i think you do have to you have to have to watch it for the emotional beats that come from joel at the end of the episode the utter realization that this is what he has to do he has to protect ellie at all cost he has to save her at all cost it wasn't enough for tess to tell him it's enough that bill tells him as well so there's two people there important in in joel's life that have literally gone this is it, this is what your purpose is, this is what you need to do. Um, and it fundamentally seals the emotional power of this show, I think. And completely, you know, enhances the emotional impact that the game has as well. So, absolutely superb. Really, really cracking episode. Um, I can't praise it enough. And considering <laughs> I have gave the last two episodes, I think, uh, nines and tens respectively, um, this has to be a 10 out of 10. It has to be. Um, I'm almost thinking I have to drop my score for the other two, but I'm not going to. I don't do that. What the score is is what the score is. And this is a 10 out of 10. This is a an acting masterpiece, a writing masterpiece, and, you know, a story beats masterpiece. Superb. 10 out of 10. Christ almighty. I can't take much more emotional weight. <laughs> but we'll see what happens going forward. And what... I know this review's gone on for a little while, but I think what comes next makes it it's even more interesting because they are able to clearly divert from what happens in the games. You know, I'm excited to see what differences they do bring forward, you know, 
when you know later on in the season season two season three season four if we get that far who knows i'm excited to see what they do what creative choices they make because this has been a fundamentally perfect uh, deviation but there you go i'm gonna end the review there because i need a drink and i'm really uncomfortable where i'm sat so thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed this video please do like and subscribe to the channel for more reviews like this um hopefully it won't be too long before i'm back in the office and sitting comfortably and making some good editing choices but for the moment that's it bye bye